Now on Denver 7 News, the results are in and the Colorado primary election is over. A look at how some of the biggest races turned out. More than 40% of adults are dealing with medical debt. It's a huge number and we're taking a look at the changes coming to credit reports this week to address some of that. And a growing number of police departments are adding what are known as LGBTQ liaisons. The impact they say this can have on public safety for everyone. Plus, a big change coming to the U.S. Supreme Court as a retiring justice announces when he'll step down. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us at 4. I'm Jessica Porter. Colorado's primary results are in and we now know who Coloradans will be voting for in November. Let's take a look at some of the big statewide races. Joe O'Day won the Republican nomination for Colorado's Senate seat last night. He'll take on Democratic incumbent Michael Bennett this November. O'Day says he will be an independent voice in the Senate who will stand up to members of his own party. I won't vote the party line. Don't know how to do it. Michael Bennett, though, he votes with the Democratic Party every time. I'll be more like a Republican Joe Manchin. I'll vote my conscience. I'll make tough choices. I will ruffle feathers. Heidi Ganahl won the Republican nomination for governor last night, beating former Parker Mayor Greg Lopez. She says she's ready to take on Democratic incumbent Jared Polis in November. And our kids are not okay right now in Colorado, thanks to Jared Polis and Democrats. It is time for all of us to step together, to come together, to join together, together, to win back our state, put aside the divisiveness, put aside our differences. We have one goal now, one goal, and that is to beat Jared Polis this fall. And Pam Anderson won the, the Republican nomination for Secretary of State. The former Jefferson County Clerk beat out Mike O'Donnell and Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters. She'll take on a Democratic incumbent, Jenna Griswold, in November. If you want to see the results from all of the other races in Colorado's primary, we have them up on our website, thedenverchannel.com. We will also have a full breakdown of the primary up on the Denver 7 News at 5. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer announced today that he will officially retire at noon Eastern tomorrow. Breyer told President Biden of his retirement plan this morning. He told Biden earlier this year that he would step down after the current term. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson will take Breyer's place. All right, some cloudy skies across Denver right now. Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson joining us with a look at the radar. Hey, Mike. I'll show you the radar in a second. I wanted to show you the 103 degree oh. high temperature out at Ray earlier this afternoon. It's been a scorcher on the plains. It is 104 now at Ray, so at the top of the hour, that's a new high. But notice Denver's dropped back. We were 93, it's 87, and you can thank the clouds coming in. This is what it's looked like over the last two hours. A few scattered light thunderstorms rolling off the mountains. They don't amount to much. Fire weather warning Northeast Plains. Flash flood watch out in the Glenwood Canyon area for that burn scar out that way. There's a little line of thunderstorms that continues out across the front range. Won't amount to much into the evening hours, but everybody's saying, well, what about tomorrow morning? Well, here's the deal. Scattered evening storms. It stays dry for the Avs Parade tomorrow, but not for long after. It storms come in in the afternoon. Cooler and stormy as we head into the beginning of the 4th of July weekend. Full details in a few minutes. We'll check back in. Thank you, Mike. Well, more affordable housing using fewer taxpayer dollars. This morning, Denver City leaders, the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless, and the nonprofit Well Power announced plans to expand Denver's social impact bond. The impact bond is a private public partnership that provides housing and supportive services for people in need by using private investor funds. City leaders say the expansion of this partnership means 125 more families will be served. Our most recent social impact bond saw that it was remarkably successful uh, with really almost 80 percent still housed after three years. Because of the success of social of the social impact bond, Denver is also eligible to receive up to five point five million dollars from the federal government and that would help house more families without increasing local taxpayer expenses. The news feed starts with the U.S. increasing its military muscle in Eastern Europe. This is new video we have in today of President Biden meeting with other NATO leaders in Spain. The president announced the U.S. will keep a permanent military presence in Poland. This is the first time the U.S. will have troops this far into Eastern Europe. 
on a permanent basis. Now, when you hear Russian oligarchs, you just think money. The Treasury Department says it has seized or frozen $30 billion from Russian oligarchs in just the last month. Now, it is part of a task force trying to drain the Russian elites of their money as the war with Ukraine continues. More than half of new COVID cases in America are two Omicron subvariants, making them the dominant strains. They only accounted for 1% of new infections at the start of May. An FDA panel is recommending having specific booster shots this fall for Omicron. Pfizer and its German partner, BioNTech, have been working on a COVID shot that would protect against a wide range of variants. The companies now say human trials could begin soon, and they also want the experimental vaccine to better protect against severe COVID by including a component that would enhance T cells. Those are made by our immune system to help fight infections. The companies don't have a timeline yet on when this could become available. The country's only approved antibody drug for non-hospitalized COVID patients could run out by the end of the summer. That's what government leaders are predicting unless Congress renews pandemic funding. Its maker, Eli Lilly, says if it's not, the drug will be sold to states and hospitals directly, and that raises some concerns of whether the treatment would be affordable for everyone. Changes are coming to medical debt on credit reports. Anything you've paid already is supposed to be dropped from your file starting on Friday. Also, any unpaid bills won't be reported until 12 months have passed. Currently, that happens after six months. But you need to be checking your credit report to make sure this actually happens. So for folks who have medical debts that have been paid and they're still on your credit report, um, you should go ahead and dispute those because we do expect that there are going to be some hiccups. There's always hiccups when the credit bureaus do things and make changes. Put in that dispute with the credit bureau and also send a copy to whoever reported the information to the credit bureau, usually a creditor or a debt collector. By June next year, the credit bureaus will stop reporting unpaid medical debts under $500. There's still about 30% of medical debts that are gonna stay on credit reports. And that 30% of medical debt is actually the hardest to deal with and it's the medical debt that the most vulnerable consumers carry. These are people who owe the bigger bills. They may be uninsured or underinsured. A recent Kaiser Family Foundation poll found about 100 million people or 41% of adults, that's a huge number, in the United States have some form of healthcare debt. A bill in Congress now would prohibit the reporting of any medical debts for services that were considered medically necessary. The Biden administration also recently announced reforms to reduce or eliminate medical debt as a factor in government lending decisions. Telehealth has been a lifeline for so many people, especially in the pandemic. Now access could be cut for people getting life-saving help for opioid addiction. The efforts to make sure that doesn't happen. And Coloradans are getting ready for the 4th of July. Up next, the best times to hit the road over the holiday weekend.